<laughs> Next, the House Rules Committee. Members met Monday night to create a rule for debate that would allow the House to consider a short-term spending bill the same day it is before the Rules Committee. Usually, legislation must lay overnight before being considered in the House. This meeting of the Rules Committee runs 15 minutes. This emergency uh, meeting of the Rules Committee will come to order. Um, the chair will be in receipt of a motion. Mr. Chairman, in anticipation of Thanksgiving, I move the committee grant a rule that waives Clause 4B of Rule Don't be 11, too sure. requiring a two-thirds vote to consider a rule on the same day it is reported from the Committee on Rules against the same-day consideration of resolutions reported from the Committee on or before the legislative day of November 23rd, Thanksgiving, 1995, for consideration or disposition of any measure making further continuing appropriations. Finally, the rule clarifies that the provisions of the rule do not apply to any special rule for the consideration or disposition of reconciliation measures as defined by Section 310 of the Budget Act. <laughs> the uh, gentleman's motion uh, <clears throat> is saying that we, uh, we would like to pass a two-thirds rule which would allow uh, the House of Representatives to take up uh, any continuing resolution. Uh, that might come before us uh, without having to come back to the Rules Committee and wait an additional day. Uh, this is done for two reasons. One is to uh, expedite measures so that uh, we do not uh, inconvenience the, uh, the rest of the House. But more than that, it's, um, it's an effort to try to make some headway in uh, trying to uh, solve our budgetary problems that we have. And um, I think uh, we've discussed this with uh, members on both sides of the aisle. Uh, everyone seems to be in support of it, and uh, we, would, uh, we would appreciate all of you voting for it. Is there any discussion on the uh, gentleman's motion? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bielitz. Uh, uh, the You folks don't intend to bring up the NECR tonight, I take it? Uh, I certainly hope not. Okay. So probably we'll adjourn shortly downstairs. Yes. Huh? We, we intend to, as soon as we can get the report and take it uh, downstairs, we intend to file it. And I would. Uh, the then, hope is we'll be able to do this first thing in the morning, right? <laughs> right. But this this will save us a day whenever we yeah. we finally get to an agreement. On it, it may save us several days right. uh, as we go along. Okay. We thank you for suggesting it. We'll be happy to support it. Mr. Frost, Mr. Chairman, of course, uh, you understand that it's the continuing position uh, of our side of the aisle that we're prepared to vote for a clean CR at any time uh, that it's brought up. Um, which has been the normal practice in previous years to have a clean CR uh, when you haven't, uh, we can't reach agreement. The gentleman yield. The normal yes. practice is to have the Democrats in charge around here, and it's not normal anymore. Well, <laughs> the normal parliamentary practice uh, well, has, has gentleman, been with gentleman yield has been to have a clean <laughs> CR. <laughs> would the gentleman tell me when the Mr. last? Mr. Litter. Would the gentleman tell me when the last time you had a clean CR was? Oh, I believe we've had one every You're time. You're just not sure, are you? I believe every time we've had a clean CR. <laughs> How about the 1986 one when you included the crime bill? Or the 1991 when you included Medicare? I believe that the Republicans added the crime bill. That was not put in by the Democrats. I do know, if CR? I may say to my friend from Texas, that, that the yes. last two last year and the year before were clean. So in recent years, we've done quite a decent job. And I believe job. all of them in 1990 were clean. If Despite I could, the fact they did such a good job, they threw us out of office. If I could reclaim, uh, reclaim yeah. the time just for a minute and uh, just say, uh, you know, we, we believe that uh, certainly you three and uh, members of your party are sincere and, uh, <laughs> and you certainly are of the highest integrity. And We don't question your motives about asking for a clean CR. And uh, we would expect the, the same respect because uh, uh, we're just as sincere and, uh, and our integrity is just as high. Uh, I really feel that, uh, that we, we really need some kind of incentive to get the two parties together. And that's really what we've been trying to do. I just came from a Republican conference along with many of the, uh, the other members in which we had <clears throat> lengthy discussions about how to go about this. Uh, I personally uh, am one of the major sponsors of legislation which is uh, sponsored by many of the senior citizens organizations across the country that uh, would uh, prohibit the government permanently from dipping into Social Security trust funds or any of the, the, uh, the three trust funds dealing with, with Social Security, Medicare, et cetera. And um, uh, I believe that, uh, uh, well, let me say that that legislation 
uh, would actually set up a commission, a private sector commission of uh, interested parties, stockbrokers. Incidentally, Senator Moynihan is, uh, is a strong supporter of my, my legislation, which, which would begin to take those funds that are collected from the American people, work, and, uh, and their uh, employers' contributions as well, and invest them as we do in the New York State retirement system, as you do in the California, Texas, uh, uh, or uh, other retirement systems throughout the country. Those programs are actuarially sound, and that's really the direction we ought to go in. And uh, I, for one, made a plea that in this continuing resolution that uh, we include that provision that would prohibit dipping into those, those Social Security trust funds. And it would also keep the Social Security offices and veterans offices open across the uh, country for those new enrollees that are coming online now, whether it's in Medicare or otherwise. And I think those things are very important. My point was we're sincere in our efforts to really try to bring about meaningful negotiation, uh, just as I'm sure you folks are too. Mr. Uh, Paul, I want to be recognized first, I believe. Uh, Mr. Solomon, uh, yeah. Mr. Chairman, we have a, I think we have a good, uh, a good piece of legislation that's been introduced into at least the last three or four Congresses that I can remember. And it's been sponsored by a number of congressmen, including Mr. Geekus, and it doesn't address a specific issue, but what it does, uh, to paraphrase, is that it says that if we don't, we would never have a stopgap situation like we have here again. We would never have, have to worry about a, a CR. What it would do is that if we couldn't pass our 13 appropriation bills, the, the last year's budget would automatically kick in. Then we never would have to face this again. And I think it brings uh, a lot of reason, a lot of common sense to the whole process of uh, budgeting. And uh, I mean, this thing that we go through almost every other year is an embarrassment. And, uh, you know, it's very difficult to address this issue when your constituents call and, and, and when they ask why. And it's, uh, it's a hard thing to, to really explain um, because it really uh, what it's coming down to uh, for the most part is uh, a lot of power plays and pride and ego. And we can stop this and I hope that you know when we get through this I hope that's one of the bills that we can bring to the Rules Committee very quickly and bring and bring some reason to this whole process to because it's really not smart what we're doing here. <coughs> well, Tony, that's one of the, uh, the areas that, uh, as you know, we are exploring on a bipartisan basis. We're, we're looking at the entire budgetary process now, and uh, certainly uh, you ought to have input into that. Uh, I have some reservations about it. Uh, I have mixed emotions about it, really, because much of what you say makes some sense. But uh, certainly we need to look at the entire budgetary process because the way it is structured now, it is structured to uh, to create unnecessary delays, and we don't need that in the government. Mr. Mr. Dreyer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me uh, just say briefly that the process of reform of this institution is one which we have, uh, many of the members of this committee, Mr. Solomon and others, have worked on for a number of years. A lot of these reforms go back to uh, Chairman Bowling. And, you know, in 1993, we looked at the whole issue of budget process reform. We tried to move that through, and we're unable to. We did pass at the beginning of this Congress major reforms which frankly have made many aspects of this process go more smoothly uh, than they have in the past. And uh, the process of reform has not, has not come to an end. And um, I say that from the perspective of, of uh, working on an effort that the Speaker has put together to uh, continue to review the committee structure in this process. So I, I think that it should be noted that uh, this is a learning experience uh, which we're going through and we will, uh, I hope, be able to come up with a package of recommendations yeah, that will right. address the concerns as they exist here. Um, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Frost. Uh, you made reference a moment ago to needing to craft uh, a CR that would attract bipartisan support, the support of the two parties, I believe is what you said. Yes. Really what you're talking about is the support of the two pieces of the Republican Party because the Democratic Party would support a clean CR, but uh, evidently you're trying to craft something other than a clean CR that would attract uh, both portions of your own party to be able to have a majority. Well, you know, the, uh, there are some, uh, some people on your side, there are two groups on your side of the aisle. Uh, one are the so-called <laughs> one of the so-called blue dogs, though, and they seem to share our view somewhat. But there are others that are concerned about uh, some of the president's existing programs, like the AmeriCorps, which I'm not. I like to zero that out 
and it is zeroed out. But if we were to put out a clean CR, it does zero that out permanently. So I, it, I, it I cuts both if, ways. I think if you had a clean CR, you would find that virtually every Democrat would support Chairman, it. Chairman, I move the question. Well, we don't want to cut anybody off. Uh, I, I, would, I would ask one other thing, and I know that uh, we cannot offer advice to uh, federal employees, but uh, if I understand the significance of what we're doing here this evening, uh, is that we are making it possible for this, uh, for a CR to be brought up on another day, uh, not today, but tomorrow, the next day, or sometime in the future, and that by doing that, uh, it will mean that uh, some federal employees uh, will be furloughed tomorrow. Uh, of course, it would require, I assume, a directive from the president, but that we are foreclosing action this evening, and only action this evening would could prevent uh, some federal employees from being for Does the gentleman yield on that? Certainly. Does Thank the you. gentleman know that the president has not signed the CR? Uh, it's my understanding he's not going to. But the president still has the opportunity to do it. It's not midnight. Uh, the president, the White House, has indicated that public statements that they intend to veto. Well, I think that's sad. I hope they will quickly get back to our leadership uh, so that we can shorten this as much as we can. I might just make, a, make mention that I haven't been able to reach uh, all of my, uh, my staff back in the district offices. I have a very long, narrow district, some 250 miles long, and several offices. And uh, I just want them all to know that they all are essential employees, and they all are expected to come to work tomorrow. They've already left. Uh, we expect for them to be watching this and listen. So that, uh, Mr. Chairman, you, you do not intend to furlough any employees in your office. No, sir, I don't, because they, uh, they all are very much wrapped up in this legislative process. Let the record show that Chairman Solomon communicates with his staff through C-SPAN. It's, uh, it's, it's my understanding that, that some members on your side of the aisle are, in fact, do have plans to furlough some of their employees. I just wanted to set the record straight. <laughs> Is there further discussion? If not, we'll recognize Mr. Linder to move the previous, move the question. <laughs> Uh, all those in favor of reporting this resolution to the floor will say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. And let the record show there were no negative votes and the resolution is reported. And the gentleman from Miami, Florida, Mr. diaz Ballard, who carried the last two-thirds uh, rule, will carry this one. And for the minority? Me. Mr. Bielinson of California. So we have Florida to California. That ought to be a good debate. Any, uh, uh, we would... Uh, Still be online tomorrow for a uh, rules meeting at 2 o'clock for the possible uh, uh, markup, not to report a rule, but the markup of the uh, gift ban legislation. Could very well, yes. Four o'clock. Possibility of a 4 o'clock on the game welfare conference. But that is not for certain, but we're on standby Jer for it. Jer Jer we Mr. This. Chairman, are, are we uh, excused for the rest of the day? Uh, all but or two not? of us. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Who's going to help us? President Clinton and congressional leaders negotiated Monday night to try to avert a government shutdown. No agreement was reached, and as of midnight Eastern time, when the previous continuing resolution expired, the government began to shut down. Negotiations will continue today on Capitol Hill as White House Chief of Staff Leon Panetta and Budget Director Alice Rivlin meet with the Republican congressional leadership. C-SPAN's online guide to government is available on your personal computer through America Online. It includes photos and biographies of members of Congress, information